there are some similarities between the sequence-to-sequence -sequence machine translation model and the language models that you have worked with in the first week of this course, but there are some significant differences as well. Let's take a look. So you can think of machine translation as building a conditional language model. Here's what I mean. In language modeling, this was the network we had built in the first week. And um, this model allows you to estimate the probability of a sentence. That's what a language model does. And you can also use this to generate novel sentences. And um, sometimes we were writing x1 and x2 here, where in this example, x2 would be equal to y1 or equal to y hat 1 is just the feedback, uh, but x1, x2, and so on weren't important. So just to clean this up for this slide, I'm going to just cross these off, right? Where x1 could be the vector of all zeros, and x2, x3 are just the previous output you were generating. Okay. So that was the language model. The machine translation model looks as follows. I'm going to use a couple different colors, green and purple, to denote respectively the encoded network in green and the decoded network in purple. And you notice that the decoded network looks pretty much identical to the language model that we had up there. So what the machine translation model is, is very similar to the language model, except that all, instead of always starting it off with the vector of all zeros, it instead has an encoded network that figures out some representation for the input sentence and then takes that input sentence and starts off the decoded network with a representation of the uh, input sentence rather than with the representation of um, all zeros. So that's why I call this a conditional language model. And instead of modeling the probability of any sentence, it is now modeling the probability of, say, the output English translation conditioned on some input French sentence. So in other words, you're trying to estimate the probability of a English translation, like what's the chance that the translation is Jane is visiting Africa in September, but conditions on the input French sentences like Jean visit l'Afrique en septembre. So this is really the probability of an English sentence conditions on an input French sentence, which is why it is a conditional language model. Now, if you want to apply this model to actually translate a sentence from French into English, given this input French sentence, the model might tell you what is the probability of different corresponding English translations. Right, so this is X is the French sentence, Jean visit l'Afrique en septembre, and this now tells you what's the probability of different English translations of that French input. And what you do not want is to sample outputs at random. If you sample words from this distribution of P of Y given X, maybe one time you get a pretty good translation, Jane is visiting Africa in September, but maybe another time you get a different translation, Jane's going to be visiting Africa in September, which is sounds a little awkward, but it's not a terrible translation, just not the best one. Um, and sometimes, just by chance, you get study others in September, Jane visits Africa. And maybe just by chance, sometimes you sample a really bad translation, African friend welcome Jane in September. So when you're using this model for machine translation, you're not trying to sample at random from this distribution. Instead, what you would like is to find a English sentence Y that maximizes that conditional probability. So in developing a machine translation system, one of the things you need to do is come up with an algorithm that can actually find the value of Y that maximizes this term over here. The most common algorithm for doing this, called the beam search, is something you see in the next video. But before moving on to the stripe beam search, you might wonder why not just use greedy search. So what is greedy search? Well, greedy search is an algorithm from computer science which says to generate the first word, just pick whatever is the most likely first word according to your conditional language model, according to your um, 
uh, machine translation model and then after having picked the first word you then pick whatever is the second word that seems most likely and then pick the third word that seems most likely and this algorithm is called greedy search and what you would really like is to pick the entire sequence of words you know y1 y2 up to y ty with hats there that maximizes the joint probability of that whole thing and it turns out that the greedy approach, where you just pick the best first word, and then after having picked the best first word, try to pick the best second word, and then after that, try to pick the best third word, that approach doesn't really work. To illustrate that, let's consider the following two translations. The first one is a better translation. So hopefully, in our machine translation model, it will say that P of Y given x is higher for the first sentence. It's just a better, more succinct translation of the French inputs. And the second one is a, not a bad translation, but it's just more verbose, has more unnecessary words. But um, if the algorithm has picked Jane is as the first two words, because going is a more common English word, probably the chance of Jane is going, given the French input, this might actually be higher than the chance of Jane is visiting, given the input sentence, um, input uh, French sentence. And so it's quite possible that if you just pick the third word based on whatever maximizes the probability of just the first three words, you end up choosing option number two. But this ultimately ends up resulting in a less optimal sentence in a less good sentence as measured by this model for p of y given x. I know this was maybe a slightly hand-wavy argument, but um, this is an example of a broader phenomenon where if you want to find the sequence of words y1, y2, all the way up to the final word that together maximize the probability, it's not always optimal to just pick one word at a time. And of course, the total number of combinations of words in an English sentence is exponentially large. So if you have just 10,000 words in a dictionary, and if you're contemplating um, translations that are up to 10 words long, then there are 10,000 to the 10 possible sentences that are 10 words long, picking words from the vocabulary size of uh, from a dictionary size of 10,000 words. So this is just a huge space of possible sentences and it's impossible to enumerate them all, which is why the most common thing to do is to use an approximate search algorithm. And what an approximate search algorithm does is it will try, it won't always succeed, but it will try to pick the sentence Y that maximizes that conditional probability. And even though it it's not guaranteed to find the value of y that maximizes this, it usually does a good enough job. So to summarize, in this video you saw how machine translation can be posed as a conditional language modeling problem, but one major difference between this and the earlier language modeling problems is rather than wanting to generate a sentence at random, you maybe want to try to find the most likely English sentence, the most likely English translation. But the set of all English sentences of a certain length is too large to exhaustively enumerate, so we'll have to resort to a search algorithm. So with that, let's go on to the next video where you learn about the beam search algorithm.